Hello! Yes, I've been gone for a while. Uh, about five months since before Winter Nam. Um, this is Brandon Seaboff, my cinematographer, sound engineer. I'm the one that's been pulling the strings behind the scene since the very beginning. Yeah, he's the guy that got me to do this. He, he really is. And, and most uh, of the terrible ideas on this channel are mine. But, uh, yeah, so why it's taken me five months to get a video out. Uh, went to Winter Nam, had a blast, met some very fun people. He came along, I don't know if he had too much fun, until we met Bobby Masano. Awesome guy. Gonna be playing more with him hopefully in the future. Got back from L.A., maintained a 9-to-5 job. Uh, I've been playing very heavily with Silent Storm, a heavy metal band out of Medford, Oregon, that I'm the bass player of. Nice shirt, by the way, Brandon. Why, thank you. Yeah. And then broke my knee. Playing, on stage. Playing with said band on stage. Yes, I finished the song. I ain't no wimp. Ow. Here's the x-ray. That little chunk on there is actually not part of my femur, which is what it looks like, which is what the doctors originally thought, but it's actually a chunk of my patella, which sheared off when it relocated after the break, along with a torn patellar ligament. So yes, surgery. So just an aside here, um, we're inserting this footage here, <coughs> shot later. We actually finished the video and uploaded it, and then immediately took it down because we realized uh, we should probably record a bunch more and double check what we found. Basically, we came to two conclusions testing the cortical cable, which you'll see when we cut back to the original video. Uh, which were, first was that it was noticeably brighter in the high mids and the highs, and the second, we found in our testing that it was about 2 dB louder than the other cables, with the exception of maybe the tsunami, across the spectrum. And... We the more kinda, I thought about that, the more unlikely it seemed. Yeah, we kind of wanted to go back and test it again just for the sake of science. Right, we wanted to make sure that wasn't just human error. And it turns out we did underestimate the effect of human error. And the volume difference we found turned out not to be there. We recorded a whole bunch more. Um, and in all the additional recording we did... There's still some minor volume differences between the cables, but it became small enough over much more recordings that we'll call it margin of error and say they're all the same. So that section of the video has been cut out. Um, we've recorded quite a bit more than we had when we shot the part of the video that you're going to be seeing. Um, and if you want to see that part of the video, too bad. Yes, it's it's gone forever. Except I keep everything, so I have it, but you'll never see it. Um, unless you saw it for the tiny bit the video original video was uploaded. There was only four views. Uh, at least three of which were mine, just checking that it was, One was me. Okay, so nobody saw it. But, uh, yes. So, other than that, <coughs> we've removed that section, um, we've recorded quite a bit more, and the other conclusions we came to are about the same. Um, so the original video will now continue, uh, minus that uh, erroneous part. I really wanted to do a review on the cordial cables. I kind of introduced them a few videos back and played a little bit with them, but didn't really talk about it much. And first off, I want to say I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm really not. I wanted to just put them side by side with other cables that I own of different brands and see how they did in as close as a side by side I could. The brands that I'm using are... The cordial, obviously. What's that? Oh, that's, uh, let's not discuss that. Okay. So the brands are <clears throat> Cordial, my trusty 12-plus-year-old monster cable that I've had for a long time. That's that exact cable, I think, is the one used in most of the videos on this channel. Yeah, for... I mean, that's like your main cable yeah, for the last 12 years. I've had this cable since I was in a freshman in high school. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then just some rando no-name cable that my dad has had sitting in a box of instrument cables for several decades. Um, I think... No clue what it is? USA One High Definition Instrument Cable. Yeah, the connectors don't have a brand on them. <clears throat> They're just... Old instrument cable. It's just a cable. And then Boutique High-End Tsunami. 
I love it. I'm not weird. Um, I did this test kind of before this video, just through my amp setup, through my cabs, speakers, and everything. Um, just listening to what I could hear playing them. And as little as I thought, you know, cables would chain on the effect of your sound, like obviously hands first, electronics in the bass, active or passive, the bass itself, its build quality, what strings you're using, what pickups you have. The amp. I think cables are going to be a bit farther cables down. Cables all the, the way at the bottom of the chain. <laughs> but to me, running through all of these, Honestly, to me, these sounded the best. They had the highest fidelity, clarity of mid-range, high-range frequencies, which I play the bass as a full-range instrument because it is. It is. So, I wanted to take a step further, hence why I met up with Brandon, yeah, for the record, I did not do that test. Uh, I was not there when he did this, like listening to them through a speaker. Yeah, but for the record, I wanted to do a bit more scientific test on it. So we decided to do direct line and actually hear what the cables did. So I'm going to let him kind of explain that. Right. We wanted to record them exactly as they are. So that would be direct line. Let's take the cab out of the equation. Let's take the acoustics of the room out of the equation. I prefer to direct line anyway. That's how most of the stuff on this channel is done. Um, and I wanted to do a direct side-by-side -side where his performance would be the same in each track since I didn't want any just variation in how he played something Making it seem like there's a difference that wasn't there. So originally uh, We were gonna have him record plugged directly into a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 Which does have instrument level inputs so he can plug the bass directly in without going through an amp He can just plug the bass itself directly in with a cordial and then it has two headphone outs. So I was going to have one headphone out be another cordial cable, so cordial in, cordial out, into a separate recorder. And then the second headphone output would be whatever cable we were comparing it to. First the unbranded one, then the monster, then the tsunami. And we recorded it that way. And we tried all that with both your P-Bass and your Green Bass. And the results were not quite what we expected. Um, actually just listening to the recordings, they didn't sound very good. Uh, they sounded wrong to me. A um, little, little more low fidelity than we're used to. Yeah, muffled and dull. <laughs> and we think that actually might have been the Focusrite interface that we were using. Right, I'm guessing either the headphone outs on it are not amazing because <coughs> They're headphone outs. They're meant for monitoring. You're not really meant to record them anyway. Or it could just be the weirdness of plugging a guitar directly in instrument level without going through an amp. It is designed to do that. It has an instrument level input, but it might just be different enough to skew this. Bottom line was the recordings don't sound the way I'm used to his basses sounding. I'm extremely familiar with how they all sound. I've been working with them for years. So I deemed those recordings uh, unacceptable for critical comparison, so we scrapped those. The benefit was that since we were getting both cables at the same time, his performance would be identical in both tracks. But since the fidelity wasn't good enough just on their own, a comparison was kind of meaningless. So we switched to a second attempt, which was the green bass into the Ice TR900 uh, run flat. Uh, with the DI set to pre, not post, going straight into a Sound Devices 702. So, purely direct line, straight through the ice flat. No processing on the recording, it's just a field recorder, it's just raw 24192. Nothing being done to it. And he just played each cable one after the other. That does introduce the element of human variance. Um, we had him play the same thing each time, but there's going to be some variation in how he did it. Velocity of me hitting the strings, pluck strength. Right. You know. it's, there's going to be some variance there, but we can average it over time. I'm um, good, but I'm no robot. Yeah, that's not how I wanted to do it, you know, one after the other, but it's what we could do. Um, and of course, doing a side-by-side -side at all is entirely unrealistic, because it's something you'll never do in the first place. But and And let me just point out that this is... Even in like the most scrutinous studio, 
This is not anything that matters. Really. We're doing this under ideal, perfect, pristine conditions. We're talking Unicorn Benevente into the single finest bass amp I have ever heard in my life into one of the finest audio recorders money can buy. Uh, a budget bass into a budget amp into a crappy recorder or... God forbid your camera's built-in microphones. None of this would matter. Yeah, and that being said, in a live gig, none, none of this, this matters. Matter. Matter. Live, live audio is terrible. There's no, you're not going to be picking out nuances of high frequencies in live audio. Yeah, and if you're a bass player that likes your P bass wound with flat wound strings and the tone rolled all the way off, you're not going to care. It doesn't matter. And <laughs> if in mixing you tend to roll off the highs and just keep the bass this narrow band at the bottom, none of this really matters. You know, I never roll off the highs. I just let them be what they are. Because um, they're there. Because they're there. They should be recorded. <laughs> But this is pristine listening conditions of perfect line recordings. Um, and the results were kind of interesting. The arrangement we did was, first I had him play just lowest note hits. Just hit the lowest note, let it ring. series of really sharp twangs for high frequencies. Consistently, the cordial does sound the best. Yeah. The high mids and high frequencies through this cable were... By far the best. By far. So much more pronounced than... In a side-by-side. -side. ...than the others. So, I mean... Even on this, it doesn't look like much. It doesn't show as like this dramatic thing on a spectrogram. Yeah, we had to actually go in and figure out the total RMS levels of right. each run. Yeah, I'm it, averaging loudness over multiple notes mm -hmm. so that we're kind of leveling out some of that human variance. Yeah, but versus all the cables, now apart from like the Tsunami, these are close enough. On par. Yeah. Like, no meaningful difference. But compared to the Monster Cable? The interesting thing was the monster cable had the biggest difference, and we yeah. were expecting the unbranded generic yeah, we thing. We were expecting the generic cable to have the biggest difference, but it was actually the monster cable that had the biggest difference. It had the same low frequencies. The low frequencies were, I'd say, within margin of error. The low but frequencies on the monster are fine. Everything from like about 1K up. 2K up. 2K? About 2K up. The monster was noticeably rolled off versus the cordial. The cordial in a side-by-side -side, is audibly brighter. But all of this can be changed with EQ. A couple dB of difference can be changed in seconds. Of course, other thing to note is we are listening to raw PCM, you're listening to a YouTube video that's been re-encoded to MP3. If you're listening to this on your phone, you're insane. Shame. Shame. 
ultimately this test is completely unrealistic to begin with yeah. because side by siding things directly critically listening to one and then the other is not something you will ever do ever yeah i mean let, let's be honest here yeah this is kind of just for science yeah this is yeah but in the long run any of these cables can get you through a gig any of these cables can get through get you through studio work whatever yeah you're not missing out by yeah. using the unbranded 30 year old cable this thing just worked just fine it's fine that being said i don't have a mogami to test i don't have a live wire I don't have a George L, so I'm missing a lot of the bigger brands of cables. I just don't have those, so I can't test them. But what I have, I tested. Yeah, and ultimately, uh, any of these cables is entirely capable of producing a good recording. <laughs> said overall the cordial cable did sound better it legitimately does sound the best of the bunch shoot we did some more testing and i went and dug out another monster cable to try which we tried uh this is a monster jazz cable as opposed to a monster bass yeah in the additional recording we did there was really no pronounced difference between it and the other monster nope um so basically you can kind of ignore that and say both the monster bass and the monster jazz performed the same mm -hmm. And there's more to consider, like, well, durability, for one. I think the cordial, just build quality-wise, is likely to hold up much better than the unbranded cable. Yeah. The only reason that's in as good a shape as it is is because it's sat in a box for 30 years. That yeah. thing's not been used much. Yeah, and like, like I said, this one I've had for over a decade, and it's beat to hell. Works. Um, the Tsunami cable I've had for a year and a half, and it... Got a pretty nasty chunk taken out of something when somebody accidentally stepped on it. But these ones, you know, they got the, the Neutric ends and nice thick coating and, and they wrap up really nicely. These don't actually tangle that easily, which is... The Tsunami tangles like you would not believe. Yeah, it does. Sorry, Keith. But <laughs> these don't tangle that easily. Truth be told, after testing everything, these really did stand out. Yeah, it's it's not witchcraft. It's it's not snake oil, and uh, we have no reason to lie. Me particularly, I don't even own any cordial cables, so it doesn't matter to me what the outcome of this is. But to both of us, just listening in a side by side and picking which one sounds the best, the cordial does sound the best. The tsunami is so close, it doesn't matter, and you could argue realistically, none of this matters. Yeah. Period. Okay. Even the biggest difference. The, the monster, here's the thing, it's not a blind test, but the monster cable was a big enough difference, I'm pretty sure we could pick it out in, in, a, a, blind in a blind test. Yeah. Um, like, the tsunami, in a double blind, even if you heard a difference, yeah. even if they sounded slightly different, you wouldn't be able to identify which was which, you'd just go, oh, those both sound good. Yeah. The other thing we did, just in the interest of making this video shorter, we didn't film it. Uh, but I actually put on a blindfold and 
you know, plugged my ears for changes or whatever. He changed out the cables. Yeah, I swapped out the cables while he was blindfolded and covering his ears because the tsunami in particular makes a lot of noise when you move it, so yeah. I didn't want that to skew it. So we did a blind test, a completely blind test. I did not know what cable he was going to plug in. Everything on the base was kept the same. Yeah. I just played it through a set of speakers and listened to it. And surprisingly enough, I was able to pick out the cordial. He did correctly identify the cordial. I, I correctly identified the cordial. I did not correctly identify, but I also heavily liked the tsunami. Yes. The, the one that you thought had the really nice bass, you assumed was the, the monster bass, because that's their claim, but was actually the tsunami. Um, but <laughs> the one the interesting thing... The unbranded one sounded just fine. To sounded me. yeah, sounded great. That <laughs> was the one he said sounded really good. I thought it sounded really good off off the start, and then I played the next cable was the cordial cable, yeah. and that was like okay, this is I like. Visibly, it. he reacted the best to that one, and um, <clears throat> it was the one he played the longest. Interestingly enough, the one that I played the least, like shortest, done, Wait, uh, work, yeah, that's not very good. Was the monster bass? Yes, it didn't sound as good. Yeah, he was kind of... That, I was surprised how fast he was done. He was like, okay, next cable. Like, he was kind of done with it right away. And that one was the monster base. Yeah. So, I correctly identified in a blind test the cordial cable. Yeah. The one that did actually sound the best to him, that he that's what I'm played the longest and was like, yeah, this one works. Yeah, that's what I'm taking away as the most interesting thing here. Yeah. Because I wasn't expecting to do that. So I wasn't expecting him to be able to pick them, but... There you go. I mean, I guess that's the takeaway here, that it's not going to change the world. Any of the cables will do. Yeah. But it's also not bullshit that the cordial does actually sound better. Yep. And yes, we are wearing different shirts because we're filming this on a different day. Yeah. We're not going to switch back the others like it's a uniform or something. That'd be weird, man. That would be weird. And I think the only defining factor between the cordial and the tsunami is you can just walk up and buy this off a shelf. Yeah. You have to order this and wait a couple weeks. But it looks cool. But it looks cool. It's custom. It's exactly what I wanted at the time with the purple and green and the honeycomb and everything. It glows under black light. It's custom. This is just boutique that you can buy off the shelf. So, and it's not even close to the most expensive cable you can buy anyway. No, seeing as, what was that cable company that we saw last night that had the $800 cable? Yeah, there's ridiculous wank yeah. out there. Corporate usury. <laughs> but, in the long run, yeah, I'm not trying to sell anything. But, it did it itself. Yeah, they sound the best, and the build quality is good enough, it's going to last. Which is really all you need it to do. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, is there anything else worth mentioning? Uh... Brought to you by Simon Ikes. Kiflom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the purpose of Wait the video... Wait I'm not leaning over dropping the clapper for it. Sorry. Like I said, I'm not an actual. Oh, wait.